Thank you, Thank you, for a humble and kind introduction. And uh, thank you, Subra, ma'am, for uh, letting me in in this uh, criminal investigative uh, seminar, where as a role of psychologist, you make uh, people feel that it's so important. And uh, the way you, you come, uh, made a comment on the field of forensic science and criminal psychologist, and particularly, focused on criminal psychologists, the kind of cases which you have uh, cited in the present. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that is one motivation which I wanted to tell the audience that sometimes you feel as a psychologist and behavior scientist, you're lost. That is no importance. But when you meet uh, Dr. Sanya, you will feel that psychologists are the most important and critical, uh, integral part of society. And that's how I believe in, and that's how I'm connected with her. And whatever program she does, the passion, the emotion, it flows, and we all get connected. They're very artsy. Everybody gets connected. And, Including and, Arti. Huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> all. Arti is the black hole, you know, that uh, she <laughs> yeah, has yeah. So coming to the topic which uh, ma'am has given me, and uh, it's uh, not that she has given me because I'm a psychologist and behavioral scientist. It is her experience with me, uh, which has um, given her this perspective that I should talk on this, you know. Because whenever some crime used to happen in our city or in, in India or abroad, we used to discuss. And finally, we used to come to the same point of the behavioral and emotional and psychological need, which she, she used to tell me as a criminal psychologist. And I used to tell, yes, this is what I was also thinking. I'm not a criminal psychologist, I'm a psychologist, you know. But then I used to think of this all psychology behind, you know. And it is less given importance in the field of criminal justice. And, 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 and today, I think last two days, we are hearing the importance and role of human element, you know, in uh, crime investigation. And finally, the delivery of justice also, that human element plays a very important role. You know? So now coming back to the point of uh, behavioral signature, I would like to recap uh, from yesterday, what we have been hearing from police, from law, from forensic, two, three important points I have picked up to connect with behavioral signature. One very important, what Dr. Goswami said, uh, IPS, I think we all know me yesterday, he gave an elaborative presentation on the law and the practice of forensic investigation, what happens. He said, very important, intent of the crime. I'm raising a question. Sanya, ma'am, you are listening to me. Yeah, yeah. How do we measure this intent of the crime? And that's still a question mark as a forensic expert, as a psychologist, as a criminal investigation, all uh, agencies and unit. I don't know, I, whenever I refer any case uh, to anybody or I look myself as a psychologist and behavior scientist, there's always an intent behind that behavior and motive behind that behavior, whether it is uh, pertaining to normalcy or abnormality or pathology, what Madam was saying, psychotic and neurotic behavior, which we define. So I'm concentrating on how this intent can be measured and how it is reflected in behavioral signature that will come again when I discuss the point. Second point raised by, I think, another speaker yesterday only, the biometrics part. The biometrics plays a very important role in forensic investigation. And there are two parts, physiological and behavioral. I'm asking this question for behavioral, where are those experts? Where are those experts who really look into the behavior what Dr. Sanyam was talking right now? It's itself a science which investigates deeply into the psychic behavior and uh, uh, deviant behavior of the personality. So that's the role is very important to understand when we talk about biometric from behavioral science. What our neural mechanism gives the measurement is not only the measurement. Let me come again. And I was with full conviction, I can tell you 
that uh, I think we uh, narco analysis today we just heard psychology part and then again the truth serum I heard which he was talking about from Tata I think uh, this so this all is giving an indication that there's more to our brain which we don't know and I'll quote here Professor Antonio who is if you are interested all of you please look into this video on unconscious emotion. He says, consciousness or feeling you, consciousness is to be, feeling is to be. He said, feel to be conscious, you know, you feel to be conscious. Are you feeling to be conscious? So that again, plays an important role of conscious and unconscious. And he says that feeling is mostly in decision-making process is ignored and the calculation is the, a felt emotion is not found in the outcome. And again, same thing is in uh, forensic science and evidence, which Adam was talking about. How it is, it's not given that due importance, which is very important, which is the main crux, which is the critical point. You know? That's how I understand when I, and then, then the neuroscience of forensic science is also coming in a big way. So this, how the brain mechanism is functioning today, everybody is listening. I think the number is dropping because obviously since morning we are hearing. So our neurons and neural mechanism is becoming, uh, uh, I think, uh, tired listening to whole day. So that's, this is happening. But maybe your emotions are very high. You really want to listen, but maybe your mind is sleeping. You know? So neural, and non-neural activity actually forms a very important part of, our, part of our life. And which Professor Antonio, in the context of unconscious emotion, he has talked about that we need to address this and understand we should not blindly follow AI, artificial intelligence, deep machine learning. He said they cannot, and he said with very conformity, they cannot capture the emotions. And today we are using technology to see the evidence, to make, to come out on that evidence factual fact. But he said the vulnerability of the feelings, what Dr. Sanya was talking about in different cases, cannot be highlighted by the machine. And also which he said the person can manipulate. If you are hardcore criminal, a person is hardcore criminal, he knows how to play the mind game what I think uh, Faninder was saying today in the morning. So how to, how to capture those real momentary mechanisms of a brain and behavior? This is what we, is a big gap in our investigation. So this is what relates to the behavioral signature. What I was trying to give you a background, what is the role of behavioral signature in crime investigation and so how do we understand the offenders, the, the manifestation of his behavior in committing crime? And how do you understand that? This term signature was first used by, I like to give you some etymological and theoretical framework also to understand that the students who are listening, that signature term first was used by John Douglas, American profiler, crime profiler, who was a supervisory agent in FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. He, there he directed his behavioral science unit that how to understand offenders behavior. So he developed this term signature. And he gave direction to his team that, that how to help those investigating officers and investigators that were involved in criminal uh, profiling. He said that the crime in the investigators who are involved in criminal profiling, how they should distinguish the offender behavior that suggests psychological needs and theme for committing crime. That is what is obvious. And from offender behavior, 
that is a part of MO, modus operandi. So I think rarely, ma'am, you must, uh, you will agree with me that modus operandi and the psychological leads and the emotional leads are, has, they are not correlated. And that's what you were telling in the case, you know, that this has a big role to play in crime investigation, which is quite neglected. So that's how this topic becomes very important for me as a, as a psychologist, that behavioral signature indicates the psychological and emotional needs of offender. And he manifests that in committing the crime. And how do we understand this is how it relates to his personality, his habits, his lifestyles, his developmental experiences in life during when he was growing. You know? As ma'am gave one example of ice cream, I think uh, the case where boy had pleasure of not paying that. What, what theme emerges from there? A person is having the pleasure of committing that crime. So it is a developmental experience the person is happy. So this is how slowly, gradually, it uh, changes into, transforms into um, crime, which according to him is not a crime. So what uh, further explanation I would like to add in this, that how we need to understand this fundamental concept of uh, psychology and emotional need of a criminal behavior, which, which talks about intent. This is what I'm trying to say. It talks about intent and motive of the crime, which has to be investigated by the expert who are trained to understand this. So this is also important aspect to look into the forensic investigation, which it, when it happens. Now, when we talk about sig uh, signature, signature, I explained how it is used. And further, uh, there was elaboration by, one, again, another American psychologist. I'll let you know a very important concept he gave. But before that, let me bifurcate this terminology, which I have just talked on signature. So signature behavior are those acts which are committed by an offender that are not that are not necessary or necessary to complete the crime. Both ways, it can or it can not be. So there can now. Next point is their convergence can be used to suggest an offender's psychological or emotional needs, which highlights the signature aspect of the crime. Many crime you see that people leave some kind of signature also that. Every in a serial killer, there is one pattern which emerges, which Madam was also talking about. So, how to uh, compare and contrast? And there will be contrast also. Right? We don't have to rely on the pattern as emerging, but there can be a different pattern also, which a criminal, serial killer or serial kind of crime uh, who is committing can change the pattern to, to uh, confuse the investigating officer or people around him when he is caught. You know? The next part of the definition, which is very important to understand, they are the best understood, signature behavior I'm talking still, they're the best understood as a deflection, this is a very important point, deflection of the underlying personality, lifestyles, and development experiences of, of offender, which I think was highlighted by Dr. Sanyal, different cases. What were the experiences of the criminal, that uh, uh, normal children and how the teenager and how it converted into crime, criminal activity. The signature aspect is mostly the emotional or psychological themes or needs that an offender satisfies when they commit the offense or the offensive behavior when they show. I'll quote one example here of one case which happened in Noida, a murder case, a teenager committed murder. And it was uh, basically the psychological theme which was there that how child was fed up with the nagging of mother. I think you must have heard, ma'am, this was a very uh, 
last year to last year before COVID, this case happened, and uh, the boy was and he was not doing uh, well in examination. It is Noida's case. Noida, I think, uh, one of the society case where I am sitting right now across the road. I and in society it happened. And you will be surprised that how that boy killed his mother you know, and had a uh, lunch with sister and uh, mother, he brought pizza and everything. And he killed the, uh, the knife and everything from the home instrument doesn't, and bat, he used the bat also. And he, wrote on his mother's face, he made a symbol, a smiley face, and wrote, catch me. She was after her life every time that uh, you're not doing well in exa examination, marks you're not getting. So the nagging was becoming, as ma'am was, frustration leads to crime. So uh, this is a real case which happened, that trust, how the child was so frustrated, and then he fled, and then he was caught, and then uh, he fled from the house and then police came and everything. And then sister, somehow she escaped and she made a, a human cry. But at that time, mother was dead. And what I'm trying to say, the emotional need of child was not uh, seen by mother, but he expressed in his uh, crime also, you know, that uh, how, how do you uh, catch me now? Now you're dead. You're always after me. Now, now you catch me, you know. So this is very important to note that people today are so much stressed, they have anxiety. Let's not create psychopaths on the road. And now we are creating in the houses, let me tell you, kind of anxiety and stress it is happening. So the tolerance level, which is very important for every one of us, let, let's not uh, uh, bring those evil which is in us, evil and good both is in us. You know? So let's calm down that evil within us and try to understand our emotional need will not be fulfilled by nobody is here to fulfill our needs. You know? It is us as an individual, we have to fulfill our emotional needs and find the way if there is some problem, talk to a person, talk to a psychologist, talk to a behavior scientist, don't suppress it because it will come in an uglier form. Sigmund Freud, great psychologist, he said, suppressed emotions will never be suppressed, it will come in an uglier form. Ma'am, remember this is a famous quote of Sigmund Freud, and it links with crime. The uglier form can be anything, you know, the deviant behavior or a crime. So this is important to note for all of us who are dealing in this area that how behavioral signature plays a very important role. So the behavior which relates with offenders, are, they are psychologically compelled to do or commit the crime. So this case was that he was psychologically compelled to do this and commit this crime because he was not liking his mother. He was hating. He was all the time compared with his sister that she's doing well, you're not doing well, you know. So this is also to note that in families, when parents compare their child with each other, the sibling jealousy, you create sibling jealousy. Sibling themselves do not create sibling jealousy. Let me tell you as a psychologist. So we have to respect each child as a unique entity in family and in college and university as well. Everybody is unique. This uniqueness is an integral part of behavior signature. That's how I think it is explained <laughs> in the investigation. So uniqueness needs to be accepted and respected. Even Mahatma Gandhi quoted that moment we compare and discriminate people, <laughs> we create violence in the mind of people. We see at, this, at that moment when we are comparing people, we are creating seed of violence in the mind of children, student, or whomsoever. So this violence is a part of crime. You know, we, we are indirectly or directly through our communication, which we are doing, we need to take care of it. Further moving in the context of uh, behavioral signature, the last point which I wanted to make a point to un make understand the concept of behavioral signature. As I said, it's psychologically compelled to do over and over that behavior and it takes to commit the crime 
And in the world of criminal psychology, it is known as signature behavior. So the repeated behavior, the compelled behavior, the to highlight the manifestation of your emotional in need in the field of criminal psychology, it is known as signature behavior. I hope it is clear to most of you, those who those who are listening. I try to make a point so that it makes a theoretical concept very clear. So it is a manifestation of offender's need in crime scene. Now going to crime scene, it, as I told you, he draw smiley on the face of the, he made a manifestation of his need in the crime scene. So he, he left the clue also. You know? If you are smart and intelligent officer, you will make a clue. There is, and that's where when I uh, gave her in my intervention to Dr. Asha, that why a criminal psychologist and psychologist need to be there when you visit a crime scene, you know? And she said that now we have a composite team, Dr. Sanil Ma'am. She said that we have, but mostly it doesn't happen. I think only investigative officer goes. No, I don't know about the forensic expert and criminal psychologist. They are also accompanying the crime scene. So that's a basic lacuna that we miss those behavioral signatures, which is a very important part of criminal investigation. And how will you give opinion on that fact which, is, which was lying there? Nobody is giving that. Because the investigating officer has not been trained in that area. Obviously, the way we have been trained till I think uh, psychology field, I, it takes time. It takes years to come to that point. What Dr. Sanyal can tell us in one minute, I think one person will take, uh, I think, months to understand and uh, learn and then go and do in the crime scene and act in the crime scene to uh, decipher the detail of the uh, crimes, which uh, crime uh, behavior and criminal uh, offense which has happened and how to I think, uh, uh, find, go in a detailing, I would mean, to say detailing of those uh, minute uh, uh, facts, which is there as a part of crime, which has happened. So that's very important uh, uh, point from offender point of view where he leaves there, but it is up to us how we find out and how we examine that to make it a part of our again, report so that it actually gives uh, a right uh, uh, place and the person is convicted in the right way based on the facts and evidence. So there are a lot of cases which is there, I think we'll see on uh, uh, online Google, there's a lot of cases which has been highlighted in the signature context. So they are evidenced in the uh, crime scene, which is the interaction between the victim, the offender and the crime itself. So this a convergence, which Mom was also telling, how to find out. So you need to have a trained mind, trained uh, expertise as a psychologist, criminal psychologist to decipher and dissect. So this was from offender, this was from victim, this is his uh, lifestyle, this was his habit, and this is how he has done it. If it is a serial killer, it is very easy you can make out, and then deviation also is easily understood. So I think uh, from the last point from giving the meaning of behavioral signature is it is a unique and integral part of the offender behavior. And it is a psychodynamic aspect of personality, which is mental and which are emotional motivations of offender to commit the crime. So which is very important psychodynamic which is mental and emotional motivations, which drives the offender to commit the crime. So these are very important aspects which I have highlighted. Now, before I go to uh, that point of unconscious motivation, a few points, I want to give you one concept, which was a very interesting thing I found, uh, uh, Dr. Sanel Bam, in the context. I think I, I, I must say all audience will enjoy this point. And uh, I was researching, since I'm a researcher, I keep researching. I found the context very important in the, the role of behavioral signature in criminal profiling. One of the psychologists, uh, um, John Money, American psychologist, he said the reason for the distinctiveness is that offenders have in their minds a, eye, a pattern of specific behavior and subsequent associated feelings, please listen to this, associated feelings that he refers to as a love map, L-O-V-E, love map. 
प्यार का नक्शा लव मैप लव मैप इज अ टर्म मनी डेवलप टू डिस्क्राइब एन आइडलाइज सीन पर्सन और अ प्रोग्राम ऑफ एक्टिविटीज दैट सेटिस्फाई अ पर्टिकुलर इमोशनल एंड साइकोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजिकल नीड्स ऑफ द फेंडर लव मैप्स नीड्स or fantasies develop in all people as a part of the natural process of human development and can subsequently be affected by both biological and environmental factors money theorizes that criminal behavior result when the human development process is derailed and a person is able to make a pleasurable association with violent or otherwise criminal activity these associations varied and evolving over time amount to behavioral distinctiveness in the way that individual offender seeks to satisfy emotional or psychological needs during the commission of a crime such as rape homicide arson and other similar or serial offenses so i think this love map concept given by john money american psychologist is very critical factor i understand when you see the rape cases which is the highest crime in our country which was highlighted by dr goswami and this rape cases the further the psychologist has analyzed that it it talks about the emotional need of a person and we see in many expressions of the committee which they highlight when the rape offenders are caught so this is something to make a note that sexual behavior and sexual orientation is a learned behavior so it is our society has a whole stake a family has a stake college university has a stake to take care of this and if there is a gap of 60% of conviction and punishment i think it's a high time we should uh, i think we, we should wake up that how this behavioral signature which has been defined in uh, researches of 500 rapists they found there it was an emotional need of the rapist which which made him compelled uh, they, i would say rather psychologically compelled him to commit the crime and various signatures were different as per their emotional needs you know? so this is something which is very important to understand when it comes to uh, behavioral signature role of behavioral signature in criminal profiling and in criminal investigation and i think this is important point which i wanted to highlight further in the context of behavioral signature as a psychologist and when i teach neuroscience or positive psychology i found there is a lot of significance of cognitive science neuroscience and forensic science so uh there is a pub publication in nature which is the highest journal which we find in uh, the subject and it is said that if we go into that context of neuroscience or forensic science we will get more detailing and scientific understanding of what the, the cognitive component the physiological component the behavioral component the emotional component component which is quite neglected most of the time and is not captured scientifically which i was talking about professor antonio of south california university he has done a lot of research still doing research he said that emotions cannot and can never be neglected and if you are neglecting you are missing on the most important point of the investigation in the context of this seminar i'm talking but you are missing most important factor in the context of decision making and we heard our parents and our uh, elders saying tumhe dil ko jo acha lagta wo karo man tumhara kya keh raha wo karo so this is all emotion mind uh, mind comes from brain brain is in mind so i think this we need to understand neuroscientist uh, antonio professor antonio said this cannot be captured by ai i am again repeating the vulnerability the weakness of humans and human element need to be captured this is not only neural activity it is non neural activity 
It is not only neural activity in the brain, which AI is capturing now with machines, but this is non-neural activity, which is shown in behavior, what I think Paninder was talking about, micro expressions, how to capture that and make your judge, make your opinion for the judgment of the case. So this is very important that what come what may be, our consciousness is there. How to make a pattern? It depends upon our, our conscious and unconscious mind. When we talk of unconscious mind, our unconscious emotion is there. For example, you see a snake, you just show the expression. What is this? This is a learned emotion. You have seen, this is a, something which is going to be danger to us, you show the behavior. So this is unconscious, motive, uh, unconscious emotion of fear. Fear is reflected. So similarly, you can train your brain to do whatever you want to do. So, but if you are an expert, you can catch, yes, this is expression. The person is, as you were saying, when you are saying truth, you will not show that kind of reactions. But when you are saying lies, the reaction, the body will react, you know. So this is what unconscious emotion is. And this is how it relates to behavioral signature, which I'm trying to make a point. And with the concept given by uh, Professor Antonio, because recent studies, I think I find his researches are giving a more meaning to psychology people to understand behavior. And uh, he gave that Emotion is a fundamental intelligence, ma'am. He has used this word, fundamental intelligence. You know, it is a fundamental intelligence of human behavior. It should not be neglected. If we use this, it will add a lot of value to our investigation and to decipher why the crime had taken place. The why, there are five W's and one H, if you remember, yesterday we had talk on this. So this is one W, why crime happened will be answered in a holistic way and in a very scientific way. And then the person has to accept because you will try to give a lot of, I think, testimony to his behavior only. The person cannot deny it. So that's the point from my side. I think I've tried to cover what the topic uh, was given to me. And I'm sure that I have tried to clear the concept, conceptual clarity and scientific for the way we are moving in this area in the field of psychology science. So thank you, Sanjeet Singh and Dr. Sanyal Mal for giving me this opportunity to speak in this such an important uh, seminar. Thank you.